And now it's time to get a little bit of in, more in-depth uh, conversation about the Wolfpack and Notre Dame. And for that, we have Corey Smith from Pack Bride, R. Corey Smith, because he makes himself sound like a big author uh, on Twitter, at R. Corey Smith. Uh, all right, sir, I'm going to ask you your opinion of what the, the North Carolina deal with Tez Walker before we're done here. Uh, but let's just get right into noon tomorrow. You're not one of those we hate noon games, are you? I mean, I'm not big into tailgating anymore, so I'm not really against <laughs> it. I like having my day. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, look, back when I used to tailgate a lot and uh, I had to be out there super early, yeah, I wasn't a big fan. And then, you know, I, I liked the night games if I was a fan. So I, 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 don't, I don't disagree with them, but uh, there is distinct advantages to playing against a team that's wearing, you know, chrome domes uh, against you and, and, you know, sweltering heat. Uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina. That's true. I forgot their their heads are like baked potatoes uh, at some <laughs> at some level. Look the no, the noon game. It's a more attractive time slot than a three thirty game. Granted, a night game against Notre Dame would be next level. But I love a noon a noon start for this one. All right, talk to me about like because I know you and I have discussed this. We talked about it before the UConn game. Um, I'm a, I was a little bit worried coming out of that game that Notre Dame might see that and just run straight ahead for 60 minutes against uh, NC State. Uh, what what do you think? How do you, how do you see that matchup playing out? Yeah, I mean, I guess we're gonna find out whether or not this is true. But I felt like watching that game against UConn, it was just a very vanilla offense, very vanilla defense. You know, the, the approach that they took, it was kind of like, hey, we're gonna save some of our bullets and look Notre Dame's been able to do the same thing they've won two games so far but they've been against I wouldn't even call them cupcakes I mean Navy is not a very good football team right now uh and then Tennessee State not a very good football team either so both of these teams have been saving a little bit for this matchup uh you know for NC State obviously they haven't had nearly as much success throwing the football as Sam Hartman has in the first two games but you know I think the concern I have coming out of that one was really you know, how healthy NC State was going to be going into this game. And it actually sounds like they've gotten more healthy, right. adding guys like Savion Jackson at the right end position and then uh, Lyndon Cooper at the guard spot. So I do feel I, I feel pretty good about this one, but we're going to find out a lot about both of these teams going into this matchup on Saturday. Corey Smith from Pack Pride is here on the Adam Gold Show. Here's the thing about it. Like, I know they were they didn't do anything exotic, Offensively, I believe we might have uh, lost the picture, the video feed from uh, from Corey. Uh, hopefully, he'll come back here. They didn't do anything exotic, but I do think that they tried to be aggressive throwing the ball, and because they tried to, they just were incapable of either getting time for Brendan Arm Brendan Armstrong. Uh, or receivers couldn't get open. It kind of left them in scramble mode, and it left Armstrong having to make a lot of these plays with his legs. So maybe they were vanilla. I'm not. I'm not even disputing that. But I thought that there were some offensive. Uh, there were some line of scrimmage question marks for me coming out of the game that I hope have been kind of corrected. Corey Smith from Pack, Ride, Pack Pride is joining us here. Uh, you didn't, feel, Especially early in the game, it looked like Connecticut had a lot of success running the ball, uh, and that was a little concerning, although, yes, no saving in Jackson. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the big issues that you ran into with that one was you know, Trevally Price making his first start, again, out of that right-end position. Uh, and then, you know, he missed an assignment early on, and that was one where – they were able to bounce out and get a big run. And there was a couple missed assignments by some linebackers. But overall, I thought it was a strong look from NC State in terms of the run okay. game. And, you know, UConn isn't a team that's known to pass the ball very well. No, NC State feels very good about where they're at, you know, defensively and being able to hold teams when it comes to the secondary with the experience they have in Shaheen Battle, Aiden White, and everybody having that defensive backfield. But, uh, you know, UConn, again, isn't known for doing that. They didn't really throw the ball in towards Aiden White or uh, Shaheen Battle in that game. It was kind of trying to pick apart the middle of the, the field and try to get something going there. So, uh, again, 
<laughs> we will see uh, what this defense is capable of going against Notre Dame on Saturday because that's going to be the first real test. It uh, there, Well, yes, it, and I think that goes both ways. This will be the first real test for Notre Dame. We're still probably a few weeks away from getting a full read on who's really good. Like, we don't really know what LSU is, right? We, so it's hard to gauge what Florida State is if we don't know what LSU is. We don't really know what South Carolina is, so we don't know what North Carolina is because we haven't gotten a fabric of the entire season yet, but we're starting to get, we'll get more high level games and we'll find out a lot about obviously Notre Dame and NC state based on this. Uh, what's your, what are you, what's your take on uh, the receiving core after week one for NC state? Yeah. You know, we've, I was actually a, early on uh, a little surprised by some of the, the receivers. I thought, you know, Kevin Concepcion was a, uh, had a good look out there. I thought that, you know, for a couple other guys, there was some good receptions early on. Keon Lafayne is the most experienced guy there. And then you had some drops, and then you had some guys that, you know, just kind of, uh, you know, weren't in the right places. Uh, you know, uh, you, you heard Brendan Armstrong talk this past week about, you know, some guys maybe cutting a little too early on a curl route, things like that, that you know, are things that can be changed from week one to week two. So now I think you're going to have to wait to see those improvements. I think the biggest concern to me was, couple of drops from a guy like Jalen Coit, and then Bradley Rosner yeah. had one in the end zone, uh, which I know Bradley Rosner has been a hot topic this week as well with the, Des Wa the Tez Walker stuff. Uh, and then, you know, the probably the easiest one uh, was to throw directly to Terrell Timmons that if he, con he converts a third down there, NC State probably drives down the field and gets a touchdown. But instead, it's a, you know, essentially a turnover on downs. They punt on the next play and, and the defense is once again having to kind of bail them out. So, uh, that's that's the biggest thing that I'll be looking for in this game is, you know, are those players ready for this moment? Are they going to be able to possess the ball, be able to actually receive the ball is the biggest thing uh, going into this weekend. Corey Smith from Pack Pride. Do you feel good about State's chances tomorrow starting at noon? I think that depends on how the offense comes out. I think the defense is going to be able to, to hold them off. I, I Again, I think Sam Hartman is going to have a good game in this one, but NC State has had a lot of success against him in the past. The past two years, he's had three interceptions in each one of those games. Now, granted, he's had six total touchdowns in those games, <laughs> and, and Wake Forest is able to pull one of those out. But uh, how, you know, are they able to get him flustered again in the pocket? Are they able to force him into some bad situations? I think the defense is going to be able to hold suit and maybe hold him to less than 30 points. It's just whether or not the offense is able to, uh, to keep up. I do think it's tighter than the seven and a half, so I would, I would go NC State, you know, with the seven and a half. But uh, whether or not I'm going to call for a win is going to be uh, probably based off of you know the first half, seeing how good this offense is actually looking, uh, and what Robert and I has going for them. So if you follow uh, Corey Smith at R Corey Smith on uh, on Twitter, if you follow him, he'll give you his pick for the game. After the first quarter, if I uh, if yeah. I can figure that out. Uh, <laughs> all right, before I let you go, sir, because um, I've been talking about this a lot. I talked to Luke Tkach of the NNO about it, and I know you've been following the story. Um, were you surprised that the NCAA came back with a no vote for Tez Walker? I was, because in all honesty, you look at the situation, it's, it's very similar to one that a lot of other players have gone through, and you know, I think the comparison that a lot of people have been making, if you're – you know, an NC State fan is, is you've been watching the situation that happened with Chandler Zavala last year. He had a similar, not, not similar situation in the fact that he was a multiple-time tra multiple transfer, but he had an injury waiver that he applied for, was initially denied by the NCAA, and then was given that, uh, that transfer waiver and, or that medical waiver and ended up being able to play for NC State last year, got drafted by the Panthers, and is now their starting right guard going into the season. That, to me, I feel like is, is what's missing here for Tez Walker. That's, that's what he's losing out on in this situation is, you know, everybody wants to make it out to, well, oh, well, he's still got two years of eligibility left. He's still, he can still play two more years. Well, you don't know what the quarterback situation is going to look like. Right. You don't know what you're missing out on here from not only from NIL opportunities right now, but also for the future because if he plays with Drake May – there's a much better chance of him potentially being an NFL draft pick, a guy that can move up boards uh, if he becomes that number one receiver for a guy like Drake May at UNC this year. And that, to me, I think is the biggest thing that's being taken away here from him 
uh, whether or not the NCAA thought it was, you know, the right thing to do uh, with the, you know, with the, the multiple time transfers, you're really taking away that opportunity from him. And you're, you're giving that opportunity to his former head coach, who's now the offensive coordinator at Colorado. They both left, went their separate ways. One gets to coach and one sitting on the sidelines watching the entire season. I mean, we have uh, state, you know, state writer, uh, you know, podcaster uh, extraordinaire Corey Smith caping up for a North Carolina wide receiver. But I think you, Corey, look at this as the same way I do. I don't care where he goes to school. I don't care uh, that it impacts the school. My perspective is from Tez Walker's point of view, and he deserves to play. And I think that the NCAA, uh, I've been calling this an own goal, and it is, I think. Uh, good luck to uh, to the Wolfpack tomorrow afternoon. I appreciate your time, Corey. We'll talk again.